Hello Penguinauts, I'm the Video Penguin and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program Space Race. Today we are landing on the moon. Now yes, tape landed on the moon last time, which really isn't helping this whole I'm a Soviet thing, uh, <laughs> because tape landed on the moon first, and obviously the Americans landed on the moon first, but unlike the Soviets, we are going to continue in our efforts. We're not just going to simply give up. We are still going to the moon, and we are not taking just one measly Kerbal. No, we are taking, well, we're taking two, but we're picking someone up along the way. Now, there's a guy stranded in lunar orbit, and, like, I don't know if this person's got seriously rich parents or something, but the, <laughs> the reward for rescuing this person is 250,000 funds, which basically pays for this entire moon mission like <laughs> this whole mission is paid for by that contract and we've also got an explore the moon contract and stuff but rescuing this guy has paid for this moon mission like twice over so we're definitely going to be doing that uh, so we're taking two but we're picking someone up along the way so we are landing three people onto the moon and of course we're taking all our scientific instruments and everything and we're just doing it better than tape really i mean yeah I mean, tape may have done it first but we're doing it better, okay, and that is what counts. So it doesn't matter if someone beats you to the post, as long as you beat them better. I, I don't even know where I'm going anymore. So, this is Muna 2, I believe, and uh, yeah, it, it's got pretty much all the tech we need, and uh, we're using a Poodle engine. Um, now, this is like right at the very limit of what we can pack into a level 2 launch, so um, we were very skint on fuel. Um, as you see, we've got a scientist with us, so we can reset all of our stuff, which means we can keep getting scientific data, we can send Roni out, she can collect the data and reset all the experiments, and then we can close it again, which means we don't need to bring multiple materials bays and multiple goos, uh, which does save on quite a lot of weight and space. Um, but here we go, so obviously our first call of business was to pick up this guy who is stranded in lunar orbit. I think his name was Giller. It probably wasn't Giller, was it? No, Giller was the Minmus one. So yeah, um, so we had to pick this guy up because, as I said, he's got a rich mum or something because we're getting paid so much to do this. Um, which wasn't wasn't too difficult at all. I mean, I think I've done so many different manoeuvres, I could do them in my sleep at this point. But to save fuel, I decided to send out uh, Val to go pick him up because I didn't know how much fuel I would need to land and then come back, so I wanted to make sure I was I was okay because I, I didn't really want to be using the lander stage to get out to the moon and I ended up using uh, quite a decent chunk of the fuel to get into lunar orbit, uh, which isn't good, so, you know, just, just playing things safe, just playing things, you know, a little bit on the safe side. But here we go, we are descending into the moon's east far side crater, mainly just because it happened to be the next crater in line. Um, I did think I was going to crash into something there, but I didn't. And I didn't actually land in the crater. I ended up landing in the highlands on the edge of the crater um, because I was just a little bit paranoid and I thought, you know what, I just want to get down. I want to set down on the ground and um, I just want to just want to be safe, just want to be safe. So we did a very careful landing and did all our scientific experiments. So yeah, nothing I haven't done like a million times before, but obviously Val has to has to be the first one out to make some kind of inspirational speech. And I think I wrote something along the lines of, yeah, you may have beat us here, you may have got here first, but uh, we, we did it better tape. We did it better. We just bet, well, our space space program is just better. Like we are just owning tape when it comes to science and money. Like tape is almost bankrupt and is way behind us when it comes to science, so even though he did beat us to the moon, um, yeah, we're certainly doing better than him, it, he is. But anyway, I thought, you know what, we've actually got quite a quite a chunk of fuel left, and it doesn't look like it in the bottom left, but we've got quite a big fuel tank, because 2.5 meter things, and with a Poodle engine, that is actually a lot of fuel, so I thought, you know what, we might as well skip a biome, because I used the Delta V calculator thing, I've forgotten what website it is, but anyway, I thought, okay, I've actually got like twice the delta V I need to get to moon escape velocity, so I might as well do a little biome skip. But I kind of didn't really stick the landing there, um, <laughs> and I was like, ah, um, hmm, that's a problem. And I kind of gave up on trying to get it upright until I opened the service bay, uh, smashed half my solar panels, and then realized I could use the service bay to get upright again. So there we go, service bays do actually have their uses. Aside from just, well, being useful for storing stuff, I do love service bays. They, they make it feel like a proper spacecraft, you know, containing all your scientific instruments in an actual bay, instead of just bolting them onto the side. Um, and yeah, hell yeah, we went to two biomes. Um, I mean, and I don't think this violates our whole, you know, one mission, one purpose thing, you know, because 
this is a mission to go to the moon, and we went to the moon, and we went to a couple of biomes. Um, but thanks to our place on the moon, we can actually just burn straight, um, straight towards Kerbin, and we ran out of fuel just there. That's how close we were to running out of fuel here. Just woof. And then I, did, I actually overburnt a bit, and I obviously I didn't have any fuel left to correct. So our re-entry was a little bit steep. I wasn't even certain whether these three could actually survive re-entry um, at how, how steep a trajectory I actually had here. Um, so <laughs> it was quite nerve-wracking, I've got to say. Um, I don't know why we always end up re-entering on the dark side of the planet. I don't know, probably because we always do our burns on the light side. Um, so yeah, we always end up re-entering on the dark side of the planet. And there you go, look, pretty explosions. Poof, there goes the rest of the spacecraft. Uh, and obviously we put all our scientific data into our capsule which thankfully means that we don't have to bring them all back. I can't believe I actually forgot about that uh, in the first like two episodes or something, but obviously I know it now, so it's all fine. But surprisingly, they actually survived re-entry and they got all the way down to the ocean and were recovered successfully with a hell of a lot of science. Woo! That's a nice, that's a nice chunk of science. And with that, we just sort of unlocked a few bits and bobs really. Uh, just sort of things I need. I got the seismometer uh, there. I did actually forget to put it onto the next mission, which is a big oversight. I really should have done that. I would have got a bit more science. Um, so I did unlock it, but I completely forgot that I actually had the accelerometer there. Uh, but yeah, just unlocking a few bits and bobs. Nothing we really need. So this is pretty much exactly the same rocket. I think I bolted a bit more uh, life support onto it because obviously we're going to Minmus uh, and it's a lot further. And uh, we're doing a similar thing this time because another person is stranded and this time they're stranded around Minmus. They're not paying us anywhere near as much to rescue this person, but you know, I, we might as well keep rescuing them. Um, because disasters do happen and you do lose, you do lose crew occasionally. Uh, a bit of foreshadowing there because... Uh, well, I'm not going to say anything. <laughs> um, so yeah, just pretty much standard. Uh, I did have quite a flat trajectory, um, so this wasn't the most efficient burn I've ever done. Um, I, I did, I did uh, do my gravity turn a little too early, but we were okay and we switched into our service propulsion system, uh, which is all very efficient and all very nice, and we were actually okay, so not a big problemo. Now, so this time we're going to Minmus. We could have gone back to the moon, to be honest, um, but I did, obviously, I wanted to have the first landing on Minmus. Tape got first to the moon, but we're going to go to Minmus first. So at least we both got first at something. And uh, so Tape's happy that he beat me to the moon, but I, as I said, I am just owning him. And thankfully, Minmus is actually in the perfect position to launch to. Uh, so we didn't even need to do an inclination change, thankfully. Uh, so we just burned straight out there, which is all very nice because, as I said, things are very, very, uh, <laughs> we're getting things very fine on the fuel side of things because uh, sending 2.5 meter spacecraft uh, to land on planets, obviously, Tape only sent one person to the moon. He had a, a 1.25 meter spacecraft. Very dinky, but I'm sending much larger spacecraft, which obviously weigh a lot more. So this is seriously at the upper limit of what a level two launch pad can do. So if we ever want to go any further, we are going to need to uh, to upgrade our launch pad and the VAB to level three. But uh, it should be okay for a little while. And there we go. We're just heading out to Minmus. Um, and yeah, I just I, I, for some reason last time I transmitted the data because I still haven't got used to the fact that the scientists can reset. The, uh, the materials babe, obviously the scientists can, so Roni got out and reset it. Uh, anyway, so there we go, we're going out to Minmus now, which is all very nice, going out to Minmus, haha. -ha. The glorious, <laughs> glorious communist revolution. Glorious comrade, yes. Russia. Sorry, I really shouldn't, I'm really not helping, am I? No, I'm not. <laughs> Um, but you know, if Tape Tape wants to spread slander about me, then obviously I, well, I, I've got to embrace it a bit, haven't I? Tape's embraced the Nazi thing a little bit, so... I am escaping to the one place yet to be corrupted by capitalism! Spy! <laughs> Sorry, I love Tim Curry. That's from um, Command and Conquer Red Alert, I believe. Tim Curry. So if you haven't seen that cutscene, it's amazing. Tim Curry escaping to the one place yet to be corrupted by capitalism. Damn it, Tape. I'm gonna... I'm gonna... <laughs> inspire a glorious communist revolution at Minmus. You may have infected the moon with your capitalism, but uh, you capitalist pig dogs, you will not take Minmus from us. Uh, it shall be a glorious motherland. Uh, sorry, I'm just... <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. Uh, so yeah, as I said, we've got another person to rescue this time around Minmus, but obviously maneuvering around Minmus is much easier than around the moon because Minmus's gravity is so much weaker than the moon. And we had a lot of fuel for this one, like a lot. Uh, going to Minmus doesn't require as much fuel as going to the moon. 
So we had loads of spare fuel. Like we were just, we were just, yeah, just swimming in fuel practically. So this one was uh, was much easier. I, I was allowed to make quite a lot more mistakes, and we got a world first for actually rendezvousing two objects uh, in orbit of Mimus. We also got a world first for. Uh, no, we didn't get a world first rondo veering around the moon because we didn't actually have enough fuel to move the spacecraft in. We just sent Valentina over, um, but we did get the world first for Minmus, which is all very nice. So uh, although we didn't get as much money from uh, from rescuing this person, uh, I think his name is Giller. Actually, this guy's name is Giller, but I can't see in the uh, in the post the, well the, the pre-production uh, little preview window. But uh, yep, yeah, so although we didn't get paid as much, we did get quite a few world firsts from that, which is all very nice. And yeah, you know, you know that your landing on Minimus is really easy because the gravity is, of course, so low. And there we are. We have touched down and brought the glorious communist revolution to this beautiful chunk of mint ice cream that is Minimus and set out a flag. There we go. Aha! We are actually first somewhere for once, which is all very nice. And we we had a ton of fuel left, like. A lot of fuel, so I'm thinking, reset the experiments, we can do some biome hopping, which is clearly Valentina and Roni's favourite thing to do, just hop around a few biomes. Now, I hopped to this biome, I really could have biome hopped for quite a while, I probably could have gone to most of the biomes on Minmus, but... Um, frankly, I thought it would have been a bit lame, really, because I am crushing Tape. Let's be honest, I am crushing him, and I don't want to get too far ahead, you know. I'll be, uh, uh, let's be sporting with our capitalist, well, I'm not going to say friends, capitalist rivals. Um, uneasy allies, let's say. Uh, we did build Calliot Station with them, though. Calliot Station, although I said it was useless and it was a big waste of money, um, well, it did pay for itself with the contracts, and actually, I think it could be quite useful, especially for refueling and stuff. So, I think Calliot Station does actually have its, uh, its merits. But there we go, we did another biome hop here because we had the Minmus Slopes pretty much right next to us. So I thought, well, it'd be a shame not to just hop to that one. Um, and as I said, we could have kept doing this for quite a while, but I, I don't want to make it too difficult for tape. Otherwise, it would be lame, you know, if I'm, I've got my warp drive and I'm zipping around the solar system and tape's still using, like... <laughs> he's just getting out and pushing his rockets to Mars and stuff. Why am I saying Mars? Juna. Um, so yeah, there we go. Burns straight back to Kerbin. You guys know the drill. Um, yeah, we had so much spare fuel, man. I, I, I really was tempted to continue, but as I said, you've got to make these things fair. You know, you got to make it, got to make it a little fun for Tape, which is surprising because Tape, Tape's got a career mode series going on at the moment, and he's all about reusable spacecraft, and he's all about efficiency and SSTOs and stuff. And he had his Juna SSTO and all that, but. I don't know, it's like, yeah, I am just owning him, really. <laughs> He's just, he hasn't had that many failures. So no, I haven't had that many failures. Tape's had more, more failures than me. Um, although, he hasn't had any catastrophic failures. And, uh, well... Not gonna say anything! You guys just keep guessing what's, what's gonna happen later in this. Uh, but anyway, I thought I'd give the, uh, give the guys a, little, a nice little view of the exploding... There we go, there it goes! There we go, burn up, burn up in the atmosphere, but we didn't get a particularly good view because it flew off. But uh, there we go, you guys know the drill, we'll just do a nice gentle re-entry this time. It was nowhere near as steep as our return from the moon, we had loads of spare fuel, so we did a few corrections and made sure we had a nice shallow descent and a nice gentle touchdown. But three biomes means a hell of a lot of science. Oh yes! So much science, I'm practically drowning in it. And I thought, you know what? You know what? Let's upgrade R&D. We've got enough money. We had a ridiculous amount of money after all that. And let's just grab ourselves a Sabre engine and the Rapiers. Sabre and Rapier engines. And you know what? That's exactly what we did. And we built an SSTO. Yes, I did definitely just watch Matt Lowne's SSTO tutorial. So yes, it looks a bit Lowney, but shh. Just don't tell him. I'm sure he won't notice. Um, and I played a little game here of how far can I push the jet engines before they explode at like the moment before they overheated I switched into close cycle mode um, but yeah I, I've never really I've never really built SSTOs before I mean I, I thought about them but they've never really appealed to me I just build massively oversized rockets in KSP um, but yeah I really I really I've never really done SSTOs before and it, it shows because my flight path here is pretty horrendous anyone who builds SSTOs a lot is probably just cringing so badly right now as to how badly um, balanced my fuel to oxidizer is and stuff. I brought, I brought way too much oxidizer um, 
yeah, so on my next launch I, I really cut down on the oxidizer because I didn't need anywhere near this much. Um, because obviously I had a nuclear engine, which I haven't unlocked yet, but I had a contract to test it out by Minmus, and obviously I don't actually plan to do that, I just plan to use this engine. Um, so thankfully we've got an experimental part that I don't actually have to do anything for. And we had another person, um, well another three people to rescue, so obviously we've got Max Key who is on Calyut Station, but we also had two others drifting around, so I thought, you know what, let's just go into low carbon orbit with this thing, with this nuclear engine, maneuver around and just rescue a whole load of people. So we've got our little Mark II crew cabin, which can fit four people in and we just sort of floated around in low carbon orbit picking everyone up so here we go there's our first one uh, we just get him out fly him over and in he gets and uh, yeah this is I thought this is actually quite a good idea so here we go we're approaching Calyut station um, which obviously if you remember correctly has Max Kerman on it who is somebody that I rescued because they drift they drifted near to Calyut so I had Jawford, uh, is it Jawford? Jo jo it begins with the J, doesn't it? Whatever his name is, get out and rescue them and bring them back to Kalia. But now we are taking her home, thankfully. I was tempted to dock, but I didn't have that much uh, monopropellant, so I didn't really want to risk it, and it was kind of pointless. I've already got the world first and stuff, so I just left it. And, uh, yeah, I mean, it does. the Kalia station does actually look pretty cool now with tapes module onto it. So, uh, yeah, I mean, we can probably keep expanding it through the future. And also, when we update to 1.1, I'm sure we'll have a much better performance when we're around it. And there we go, we're just getting the third one and we just plan our manoeuvre to get back to Kerbin. About updating to 1.1, uh, the only thing we are waiting on is TAC life support, TAC life support. Um, Science Alert also, we do need that, but Science Alert isn't vital. Attack life support is vital. I mean, attack life support makes a big difference to this series, and it hasn't. It, I've tested it. All the other mods work, but attack does not work. So we are waiting on uh, attack life support to be updated, and then we'll update to 1.1, which is all very nice, isn't it? Because um, 1.1 is just amazing. I've played a bit of it. It is just amazing. I really do want to. And collaborative warfare should be able to update to 1.1, possibly. Possibly, but no promises. It can definitely update to 1.0.5 though. Um, but anyway, so I hadn't tested this, tested this thing on re-entry at all. Um, and when the cockpit started overheating, I thought I'd pitch up a bit and completely... <laughs> completely ballsed it up. Um, and went into a complete flat spin. I mean, I just couldn't recover this thing. This thing was just having some kind of seizure, it just refused to point uh, the direction of travel. And obviously you can't activate your jet engines um, when you're traveling backwards because you aren't having air flow into your air intakes. So I just couldn't do it and in the end I just deployed my emergency parachutes in the hope that I could get it stable. Um, but then I was just like, you know what, you know, this just we were so low, we might as well land. So we landed pretty, pretty hard, but thankfully our passengers survived. We did lose some really expensive engines though, which basically made the profit of that mission, it reduced it from like 300,000 to about 80,000. I mean, these, this nuclear engine and these Sabre engines that I'm using, Sabre engines are from B9, they're just slightly better than Rapier engines, but these engines are so expensive, like, jeez. Um, oh, <laughs> They're really, really expensive engines. I think they're like 40,000 each. No, that's the big one. I think these are like 10,000 each, these ones. But they're damn expensive engines. Um, so that was a bit annoying. But thankfully we weren't in 1.0.4 because obviously the new water model does mean that they survived that. Otherwise, I think they definitely would have died. But anyway, similar kind of mission this time, uh, except we're only rescuing one person, and then I thought, you know what, let's deliver a satellite. Um, knowing me, though, I, I didn't actually read the contract properly, and they want a satellite out by moon orbit, and it's not actually in moon orbit, but at the same altitude that the moon orbits around Kerbin. Um, so... <laughs> um, yeah, you find out what happens. Oh dear, I didn't really read it. And then by the time moon orbit occurred to me, I'd already launched and I didn't think about, you know, packing extra fuel or extra life support. Um, but, you know, I just, I just went on with my went on with my merry way and uh, rescued the first person from low carbon orbit. So it was all fine for a start. Um, and then I thought, you know, let's go out to moon orbit. So I thought I would use um, a moon encounter, I'd use the moon's gravity to slingshot me into the orbit that I wanted. So uh, I did spend quite a while fiddling with maneuver nodes to see the best way uh, to use the moon's gravity for that purpose. And in the end, it was just go really close to the moon and burn retrograde so you almost go into moon orbit, but not quite. And that was that will slingshot you uh, into the orbit that I wanted. Um, and the, the agreement that Tape and I, you know, we agreed on 
was you can deliver satellites with with SSTOs, right? But that satellite is not allowed to have any kind of delta v on its own, right? So you can't f fly a plane up, categorize it as a plane, and then launch like a rocket out of that, and then that goes to the moon or whatever, because then that's just a rocket. So Tape and I agreed. SSTO satellites, that's completely fine, but the things that you launch from it are not allowed to have any kind of delta V. They have to be single stage, um, otherwise they count as rockets and not as planes, um, which I think is, I think that's pretty cool. Yeah, so, um, so yeah, we're only setting up a tiny, tiny little satellite and we're getting paid quite a lot to do it. Um, so it's only got an accelerometer on it, uh, a dish and some solar panels. So we were able to fit it into the tiny little cargo bay, which replaced our crew cabin. And we did a much more uh, efficient launch as well, I mean, I was quite happy with it. We still brought too much oxidizer, I cut down the amount of oxidizer we brought, and I did a much more efficient launch as well, so it meant that we still have a lot of excess oxidizer, which uh, I will fix next time we use this plane, because I'm sure we'll be using it a lot, because SSTOs are just awesome. I know we went from, like, tiny little jet-powered planes that can't even exceed the speed of sound to a single stage to orbit, um, which isn't quite right um, in terms of history, but... That's, shh, it's fine, it's fine. Nobody will notice. Yeah, I did, I did advance very linearly straight to the rapiers because I was like, well, you know, it's my plane bit next. I want the best parts for it. And I realized I just about had enough science from the Minmus mission. Um, so, you know what, why not just go for the rapiers and, and the saber engines, um, which is what I did. So there we go, we had our moon encounter. And um, I started, you know, decreasing to so that little purple orb, but that's what we need to get our little thing into. And I think it was around here that I started to notice I didn't bring enough life support. I didn't even think about it at all. And it's around here I realise, ah, Biddy, you haven't brought enough life support. And obviously, well, Valentina immediately ejected <laughs> the guy that we rescued um, because, well, she's not going to be the one to suffocate. But we still didn't have enough oxygen, and really, unfortunately, Valentina suffocated. Um, which is really bad, like really bad. But thankfully, we still had control of the spacecraft because we, because of the probe we had in the cargo bay, which meant we could still control it. But yeah, Valentina and the person she ejected from the spacecraft to try and prolong her life uh, both suffocated from lack of oxygen, which is suffocated from lack of oxygen. What else are you going to suffocate from? But <laughs> uh, yeah, that's. Uh, that's not good, that's a bit of a blemish, and we didn't have enough fuel to return them, so I just thought, you know what, we may as well just continue the mission. So that's what we did, we got into orbit, and we got paid, but we failed our rescue mission, and Valentina, you know, one of the greatest Kerbals, Kerbal pilots ever to live, unfortunately passed away. Um, so, uh, it, the start of the turn went very well, but near the end there, this final mission was a complete disaster. In future, we'll not make the same mistakes again. We'll probably use more unmanned uh, SSTOs from now on, at least for a little bit. But anyway, I've been the Bearded Penguin. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Bye, everyone.